I made another video about um, factor analysis in PLS, but I only used reflective factors in that video. So I'm going to use a formative factor in this one and show you how to assess a formative model. Um, I'm not going to repeat all the things from the reflective model uh, validation video, but I will just focus on the formative model in this one. So um, the way you assess a formative factor, uh, like CompUse here, which uh, I'm pretending is formative for the moment, um, versus the way you assess a reflective factor is a little bit different. Re reflective, I showed you before, you look at the AVE, you look at um, the loadings to see if they're above 0.7 on average, and um, you look at the Cronenbach's alpha and the composite reliability. All of those things assume a correlation of indicators, but a formative measure um, does not assume a correlation of indicators. In fact, it assumes a, uh, what's the word, distribution, a distributed set of uh, indicators such that uh, you maximize the amount of explained variance in the latent factor. Uh, whereas <clears throat> with reflective indicators, you're trying to maximize the overlap between indicators, make them interchangeable, whereas formative, you want them to not be interchangeable. So the way you assess this is uh, through two primary uh, measures. The first is you just want to see if the indicators have a significant effect on the latent variable. And you can just look at the bootstrapped values for that or look at the p-value. Um, and then the second method is through doing um, a collinearity diagnostic to see if these are overlapping. You don't want them to be overlapping too much. Uh, that would be the point. Uh, they're, they're supposed to explain different parts of the formative factor. So you can do that through looking at the VIFs, the variable inflation factors. So here we go. Let's first look at um, whether these weights are significant. Go to Calculate, um, go to Bootstrapping, and as a general rule of thumb, minimum of 2,000 subsamples. Um, really, uh, it's been recommended to do 5,000 for the sake of speed for this video. I'm going to keep it at 2,000. I think the minimum uh, default is actually 500 in Smart PLS, but again, change that up to at least 2,000. Um, since I'm looking at the factors right now, not so much at the paths, let's focus on factors, check that box, and um, everything else is the same. Start calculation, and there we go. Now, we want to look at the outer weights right here, down at the bottom of final results. And the formative factor we had is this one, comp use, and it's these three indicators here. Notice that they are, in all cases, less than 0.1 for the p-values. Um, so if we're taking a liberal approach, uh, then we're okay if we're strict and we want to say, no, 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 it's 0.95. Um, so all p-values must be less than 0.05. Well, then we have a bit of a problem here. But I tend to take a more liberal approach here with formative factors because uh, it's, it's much more consequential if you delete a formative indicator than a reflective one because these don't overlap intentionally. Um, and so deleting this item would, would actually change the nature of the construct. Now, if it had absolutely no effect, like, I mean, a p-value of 0.9 or 0.5, anything far outside um, uh, that p-value range, then deleting it um, would actually not have a major effect on the nature of the construct because you could argue that statistically it is not having an effect on the construct. The, its effect is no different from zero, according to the p-value. So deleting it wouldn't be a horrendous crime. Okay, so this is our evidence, uh, part of our evidence for a quality um, formative factor. Now let's go look at the variable inflation factor. To do that, you actually have to go back and rerun um, the PLS algorithm. You could also use the consistent, but since we're focusing on a formative, right now I'll just leave it at uh, the regular PLS and hit start. Um, and if you go down to the bottom here, it says collinearity, uh, collinearity statistics, VIF. That's what we want to look at. Green is good, black is borderline, and red is bad. So, um, but again, only for formative indicators. Notice I have red here, but this is on usefulness, which is reflective. We expect them to be overlapping. So I'm actually surprised there aren't higher values here. Okay, but for comp use, the one that we say is um, formative, these three <coughs> are all less than five, which is the cutoff here. Um, a very conservative uh, cutoff would be three. 
and we're below that as well. So we're good here, no problems. And so through the VIF and through the p-values for those weights, um, we can establish that indeed uh, comp use is a valid formative uh, factor and can be used moving forward. And that's it, pretty straightforward.